Hello everyone, welcome in today's video. In today's video, we'll be looking at the solar system level of power that exists within the Namek arc. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and let's get started. What you can expect from this video. The first thing I'll be doing in this video will be three different ways of scaling characters from the Namek arc to solar system level or higher. The first line of scaling will be involving the explosion of planet Namek itself. The second line of scaling will be using some spirit bomb scaling. And the last one is a different type of scaling that I haven't shown before on this channel that I think you might be interested that will show consistency for the solar system level scaling that will be shown in the Namek arc. After I do all three of those methods of showing solar system level the Namek arc, I'll be then doing one way which is commonly used to get solar system in the Namek arc. However, I'll be disagreeing with this last method, showing why you should not be using that particular method. With that, let's get started. Starting off with the planet Namek exploding. There are in fact three different versions of the planet Namek explosion. There is the manga version, there is the anime version, but the anime version happens twice. Once when we actually see it on planet Namek, and the second time is Goku's flashback of how he survived the planet Namek explosion. All three versions will be shown right now. Starting off with what most people would consider the definitive evidence for solar system or multi-solar system level scaling in the Namek arc. And that is the anime flashback when Goku comes back to Earth and he explains how he survived the explosion of planet Namek. In which we see the explosion go off and it actually lights up a small tiny portion of the galaxy. We will be calculating this to see exactly how powerful this is. Starting off we need to understand exactly how big galaxies are. Because you see a lot of people use the size of the Milky Way galaxy to dictate the size of the average galaxy. However, if you look at something like the local group of galaxies, which has several 52 galaxies, we see that only three galaxies are considered large galaxies, one of them being the Milky Way. The rest of them are in fact dwarf galaxies, which are much smaller. And if you zoom out even further to the Virgo supercluster, we can see that this is consistent, where in the number of galaxies in the supercluster, there are 2,500 which are large galaxies, but there are over 50,000 which are dwarf galaxies. This means, without further context, we should be using a dwarf galaxy, not a large galaxy. With that, we can Google what is the range of the size of a galaxy, finding it to be 3,000 light years. And with that, we can start our scaling. We can pixel scale the size of the galaxy and pixel scale the size of the explosion to get the explosion to have a diameter of 43.8 light years, which we can then convert this to meters. After that, we can look at how much energy is the gravitational binding energy of Namek, which we can assume could be like Earth, being 4.29 times 10 to the 32 joules. And with that, we can then expand this energy using something called the inverse square law. The inverse square law dictates the amount of energy minimum requirement it takes to expand an explosion based off just geometry. Normally it'd be even more energy, however we're using the bare minimum so that we can lowball this explosion a bit. Considering the explosion is absolutely massive compared to the Earth's diameter and thus planet Namek's diameter, we can expect this to be a very large amount. So large in fact that it is 263 sex decillion joules. Or for comparison, since that number isn't very useful for most people, that is about 2.6 billion times the energy of an exploding sun. This is 1.1 million times the necessary energy needed to destroy our solar system. However, this version of planet Namek exploding was commonly accepted to be solar system level. The problem was never this version, but instead the other two versions, the manga and the particular anime version that happened before this. 
So get ready to be surprised, because I'm about to tell you that both the original anime and the manga were already at a solar system or higher level. Now let's do the manga version of the Planet Namek Explosion. In the manga version of the Planet Namek Explosion, we can see the explosion with some what looks to be stars nearby. I'll assume these stars are not galaxies because it makes more sense for them to be stars. If we do so, we can then compare the explosion to the nearest star, in which it is 120.4 pixels away. We then can compare that to what looks like the main bulk of the explosion, which I'll show with this blue circle, which is 79.4 pixels across. Which, if we then use the closest star to Earth, which is Alpha Centauri, we can say this explosion is about 1.62 light years across. This is 27 times smaller than the anime one we just calculated, however it is still at a solar system level, being 362.25 quindecillion joules, which is still 1575 times the level of destroying our solar system, or 3.6 million times the power of a supernova, which is an exploding sun. However, some people may point out that the explosion in the manga isn't as clear as the anime for showing that it is an expansion of the original explosion. Instead, it looks like it's just a white dot similar to the stars around it. So let's calculate it like that. Method 2, calculating it, assuming that it has the same brightness as the stars around it, because it is coloured as such. Doing so, we first need to work out the volume of the explosion being 2.2 four five cubic light years cubic light years are a lot bigger than just normal light years because they are volumetric we then to find out how much energy something has for brightness need to use something's wavelength energy the wavelength of a single photon of the sun is 500 nanometers which is very small and gives a very tiny amount of energy as such and but, because they are very small, the volume of a photon is also very small, being 1.25 cubic micrometers. Again, cubic micrometers are a lot smaller than micrometers because we are talking volumetric. In fact, in this massive explosion volume, which was 2.2 cubic light years, the number of photons we can fit inside of it for this explosion is an absolutely gigantic 15.2 unvigintillion photons, which yes, that number is as crazy as it sounds. So much so that despite the tiny amount of energy for a photon, the amount of energy of this explosion, given its brightness being as bright as the sun, is 6 quindecillion joules, which is still 26.2 times the energy needed to destroy our solar system, or equivalent to 60,000 supernovas. So yes, even the manga version is beyond the energy needed to destroy our solar system. Now let's look at the original interpretation of the Namek explosion back in the anime. In this version, we don't really get a clear size limit to how big the explosion of planet Namek was. It basically just goes off screen and we can't really tell. However, we do see frames of the explosion and pieces of Namek being launched very fast. So we'll be using a method very similar to what I used in my Master Roshi video, where I showed how Master Roshi blowing up the moon so quickly is above just a moon level feat, but instead an earth breaking feat. So using that same logic for planet Namek exploding really fast, we can get a more realistic value for how much destroying this planet Namek was. First off, we have to find planet Namek in this image, which is very difficult, but looking very closely and zooming in, I believe it is this spot right here. And using that estimate of that spot right there, we can then say that in 0.2 seconds, the explosion reached this very far distance. We're using that very far distance, we can get a speed of 1.2 billion meters per second. Compare that to Earth's escape velocity, if you remember, Master Roshi method requires the escape velocity of the planet originally. We can then say that the energy needed to destroy this planet Namek was at least 3 tredecillion joules, which is about 13.85 times the energy needed to destroy our Sun, which is not solar system level. However, look here at this scene here, right after the Namek explosion. What do you see? Also, what do you not see? 
I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds up. And what I can tell you right now is, first, Planet Namek had three suns. What happened to these also, three suns? We They're can not see on a screen bunch of anymore. planets and even stars in the background. Which is also odd. You see, if you ever see a picture of, let's say, the moon landing, you will not see any stars in the background. The reason is, the sun is so bright that when the sun shines on a planet, so not even the sun itself, just shining on planet Earth, that reflection of light is so bright, it will outshine all the stars around it, making what looks like a clear black sky. However, we not only cannot see the three suns of planet Namek, we also can see all of the different planets and all the stars in the background. That means there is no sun shining light on those planets to outshine the stars. There is also no sun because we cannot see it on the screen. So with that, let's calculate what it would be for to destroy all three of the suns on planet Namek in the time frame shown in the anime. Now we can look at the gravitational binding energy of the sun at 230 duodecillion joules. We will be increasing this with the following information. The first thing is, the explosion of the sun happened faster than it normally would. The total explosion of planet Namek only took 4.3 seconds. We can say that the sun must have exploded in less time than this, so we'll use at least 4.3 seconds. Using the radius of these suns, we can then say that the speed of which they blow up was 161 million meters per second. Compare that to the sun's escape velocity at a mere 617,000 meters per second, we can upgrade the gravitational binding energy from 230 duodecillion joules to 15.8 quattrodecillion joules which is an insane increase, already beyond what we were before. But we see we're not done yet. We now need to increase the energy even further using the inverse square law like we did before. The reason being is these suns are not next to planet Namek. Therefore, we have to use the energy required to reach the suns. The suns are 149.53 billion meters away. This would mean it would be an extra 46 thousand times of energy just for this amount to reach the suns. In total, this will be 729 quindecillion joules, which by comparison is 3,170 times the energy needed to destroy our solar system, or equivalent to approximately 7.3 million exploding suns. One other interesting supporting point you all may have noticed is the shape of the explosion of this particular explosion of planet Namek, which is also the same as in the manga. And that is, it's shaped like a gamma ray burst. A gamma ray burst only ever happens with the largest of supernovas, where they are so large that it comes from a star anywhere from 8 to 20 to even 40 times the mass of the sun. The larger it is, the bigger the gamma ray burst, and also the more likely the gamma ray burst will happen. This shape happens when you have an explosion in space that is large enough. So in the first 0.2 seconds of the Namek explosion in the anime, we are already at the level of a gamma ray burst given its shape. And then afterwards it expands and goes even further. So it makes sense for it to be at this beyond solar system level, given that it was in the first 0.2 seconds already beyond a gamma ray burst. So first we look at the anime flashback where we got 1.1 million times the energy needed to destroy our solar system. Then we looked at the manga where we got anywhere from 26.2 to 1575 times the energy needed to destroy our solar system. And finally there was the original anime with an explosion that yielded, at bare minimum, 3,170 times the energy needed to destroy our solar system. It looks like the Namek explosion is very consistently beyond solar system level. And this is the same explosion that a freezer cut in half, half dead, and with absolutely no energy, was able to survive point blank. Now for the second method, uh, we'll be looking at solar system level scaling in the dynamic saga, and that is spirit bomb scaling. Now for me to explain spirit bomb scaling, I first need to ask you, 
who has better key control, so like if they had a certain amount of energy, who could compress it the most between Saiyan Saga Vegeta and Saiyan Saga Goku. In my personal opinion, I would go with Saiyan Saga Goku, considering he can compress his energy so much, it can power himself up like the Kaioken, while Vegeta using all his energy in an attack like the Gallic Gun was still inferior. So I think Goku has better key control. The reason why I say this is because when we look at both Vegeta's Spirit Ball, which was used to make the False Moon, and Goku's Spirit Bomb, we can see that the Vegeta's Ball is actually bigger than the glow of the Spirit Bomb, because the Spirit Bomb wasn't even needed to be forged. It wasn't enough energy to make a ball. However, when we look at the Namek Spirit Bomb, that one is absolutely gigantic in both the anime and the manga. So, to make sure we can actually scale between how much power the Saiyan Saga Spirit Bomb has, all the way up to the Namek Saga one, I would need to compare the size of the orbs, which would be Vegeta's Power Ball and the Spirit Bomb on Namek. I won't be able to use the Saiyan Saga Spirit Bomb, because when Goku had it at full power, he never actually forged it into a ball. So let's calculate the power of the Spirit Bomb, starting with the power of the Power Ball. We know that the Power Ball has the energy to create an artificial moon, which is a moon that's just made out of pure energy. To do this, we'll be using Einstein's equation of E equals mc squared, turning mass into energy. The mass of the moon is 73.5 sextillion kilograms, which means when converted into energy, we get 6.6 .6 duodecillion joules, which is on its own already dwarf star level, just for Saiyan Saga Vegeta. Now, if we compare the size of the Power Ball to Vegeta himself, we can get an approximate volume of 0.005 cubic meters, which is very small. Now, let's scale the size of the planet Namek Spirit Bomb. We will assume the planet Namek has a diameter the size of Earth. Many people think it's bigger, so remember this could be even larger than that, but we'll just assume it's the same size as Earth. Then we have to work out the volume of the Spirit Bomb. This one, sadly, is not in a sphere, but instead in a cone, so we're using a cone-like volume. And the volume we will get is 4.4 quintillion cubic meters. This makes the Namek Spirit Bomb 875 quintillion times stronger than Vegeta's Power Ball. This means that the total energy for the Namek Saga Spirit Bomb is approximately 5.8 novem decillion joules, which is about 25.1 trillion times the energy needed to destroy our solar system which actually reaches the energy of multi-solar system level. Now, if you thought this idea of scaling was new and original, you are incorrect. And the reason is, is I've already used this scaling in a previous video. That video was when I was converting power levels to both speed and actual power, in which in that video, I used this exact line of scaling. Go check out that video to see other lines of scaling that will surprise you from a long time ago. Now for the new method that requires a bit of a physics lesson. This method will be on how large is planet Vegeta based on the physics of planet Vegeta. Mainly on the fact that when we have Nappa and Vegeta come to Earth, they talk about how the gravity is so light, but there's no description of why the composition of planet Earth would be different than planet Vegeta. I mean, you'd think that if the Earth had 10 times the gravity, all the things would be 10 times denser, or 100 times denser, depending on how you look at it, yet we have no such comment of this, meaning we can actually assume it has the same earthly-like composition as Earth itself, just with 10 times gravity. So what does that mean for planet Vegeta's size? Well, here comes the tricky bit. So we have a planet with the same density slash composition of planet Earth, but it has 10 times the gravity, and that's all we know. So how do we figure its mass and volume out? Well, I'll be listing the standard equations people will be using, such as the gravitational binding energy, the gravity of a planet, the density of a planet, which in this case, since a planet is a sphere, we'll be using the density equation, modding it using the volume of a sphere to get a modified density equation. And from these, I will then show you how to work out the mass and volume using only the fact it has 10 times Earth's gravity, as well as a similar composition to Earth itself.
Now I won't be explaining every single step of the way because I don't want to bore you. Instead, I'll just graphically show it so you know how it works. Enjoy. Now we can start plugging in known values. For example, the big G here isn't gravity, instead that is the gravitational constant that working out gravity of anything in the universe. After that, we then have the little g, which is 10 times Earth's gravity, because that's the planet of Vegeta's gravity. Then we have Earth's density, which is our assumption here, because Nappa and Vegeta don't comment on different composition, we have to assume that it has the same earthly composition which we can then equate to Earth's density. Let's start plugging in the value. After plugging the values, we get these numbers. The first one for the mass of planet Vegeta is 3,151 times the mass of planet Earth. Well, if we look at the radius of planet Vegeta, the radius of planet Vegeta is ironically just 10 times bigger than that of Earth. After plugging all these values into the gravitational binding energy formula, we are able to understand that the gravitational binding energy of planet Vegeta is 223 undercillion joules, which is dwarf star level. However, this is less than the energy that Vegeta used to make his artificial moon. Or at least it would be to anyone who has not seen my Master Roshi video, where in that video, I make a very clear distinction between the energy needed to destroy a planet as well as how much energy is actually put in a planet. And the reason is the escape velocity. So let's work out the escape velocity of planet Vegeta. This gave an escape velocity of planet Vegeta of 198,000 meters per second, which we can then use in the equation that was used in my Master Roshi video, where we use the gravitational binding energy times by the square of the radius of a planet, which we've now got, the escape velocity of the planet, which we just worked out, as well as the time it takes for the planet to explode. There are many different versions of planet Vegeta exploding, so I'm going to have to do this for several different examples. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, the time frame it took from planet Vegeta from getting hit from Freezer's attack to then explode was 12.1 seconds. This gives an energy of 156 duodecillion joules, or about 68% the energy needed to destroy our sun. In the Dragon Ball Z episode of Bardock special, we get a time frame which is actually a bit less, being 8.3 seconds. This would be 332 duodecillion joules, or about 1.44 times the energy needed to destroy our sun. Next up is the Dragon Ball Z Funimation flashback that was in Season 3 of the anime. Now being in the anime, it was understandably much quicker than either of the movie interpretations, with the time frame of this explosion being a mere 5.2 seconds. The energy of this would be 846 duodecillion joules, or 3.68 times the energy needed to destroy our sun. And the final one, and actually the slowest one, was from Dragon Ball Z Cooler's Revenge, in which the time frame was 56.3 seconds. This gets a much lower energy than the others, being 7.2 duodecillion joules, or about 3% the energy needed to destroy our sun. However, the reason why I put this one last is not because of it being the weakest, or it being chronologically after all the others. The reason is that when this one explodes, it then expands to a size much larger that actually represents this level of power. Check it out. Now, of course, this is the energy of Frieza on planet Vegeta with what expected to be a power level of 530,000. So for each interpretation, we need to scale them up 
towards Final Form Frieza had on Planet Namek at 120 million, in which we get Dragon Ball Super Broly's energy to turn into 154 times that of destroying our sun, the episode of Bardock's energy to turn into 327 times the energy needed to destroy our sun, the Funimation dub to have its energy turn into 833 times the energy needed to destroy our sun, and Cooler's Revenge to turn into a mere 7.1 times the energy needed to destroy our sun. Of course, this also makes another assumption, being that Freezer using the tip of his finger is all his power. We know from Cooler that he can use different amounts of energy depending on how much he uses in his hand. For example, Metal Cooler uses a very casual amount when he uses one finger, while Fifth Form Cooler very clearly uses his whole hand when he was serious against Goku. And this is consistent for Freezer as well, as we see in Dragon Ball Super when Freezer got serious against Topo, he also used, well, not just one hand, he used two hands. Showing that he very likely wasn't even going all out when he destroyed Planet Vegeta. Meaning this could be several times more, in which two of the versions at only a few times increase would easily reach solar system level, making it consistent with the previous lines of scaling. Now some of you may want to be able to do this type of calculation yourself, however you're not able to work around the formulas like I showed in this video. Well there's no need to worry. If you have a known gravity for a planet, as well as you have the composition assuming it to be like Earth, you can assume the following properties. If we have the gravity of the planet G, we can then say that its radius will be a, a multiplier of G, so for planet Vegeta it was 10 times. Its mass will be a multiplier of G to the power of 3.5, which for planet Vegeta is 10 to the power of 3.5, or 3162 times. Its escape velocity is a multiplier of G to the power of 1.25, which is the multiplier for planet Vegeta at 10 to the power of 1.25, or about 18 times rounded. While the gravitational binding energy is G to the power of 6, or 10 to the power of 6 for planet Vegeta, which is a million times that of Earth. While in this video I've talked about many ways of scaling Namek Saga characters to solar system level, there is one way I don't actually agree with scaling Namek Saga characters to solar system level, and this way is commonly used by a lot of people. This argument is that planet Namek is so large that it has three suns orbiting around it. Therefore, planet Namek should be larger than three stars. In my opinion, this argument isn't very strong. And the reason is, there is a type of star system called a binary star system. In which what happens is you have a, two orbiting bodies, these being stars, orbiting each other, and you can have planets around these stars. Here's a diagram of how they might work. And the example I think Planet Namek is, is actually what's called a P-type star system, in which the orbiting bodies have a central point in the middle that they orbit around and never touch. And so in this center point, you could see Planet Namek. And while a trinary star system is very rare, it is not impossible. In fact, here's an example of a real-life star system, which has a total of six stars all orbiting each other. So if a six star star system can exist, I'm pretty sure planet Namek three star star system with Namek conveniently in the middle that is outside of any of the way of the suns is more likely than planet Namek being more massive than three stars. Thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you found it informative, scaling some Namek Saga characters to solar system level. Comment down your thoughts so I can know what you're thinking, perhaps I've missed something, perhaps there are more lines of scalings, who know. Check out my other videos such as my entire Dragon Ball playlist, my How Strong Is playlist, or the very popular Beyond Boundless playlist. Also check out in the description of this video where you'll see my Discord server, you'll also see other channels that do very good scaling, so please check out any of them, support those channels like my friends Captain Quarist and Coron O'Keefe. With that, hope you all have a good day. Thank you all for watching.